Okay, we're here in lesson 03 begin, and we're going to go ahead and get started with XGen. So um, you should already have, hopefully, the XGen plugin loaded, which I have up over here. Uh, and you should also have the file in here. If you're obviously loading lesson 03 begin, the file will already be there. The plugins, however, do not load along with the file. You do need to make sure those are loaded um, here through Windows, Settings and Preferences, uh, Plugin Manager. Uh, if it's not already up, again, those don't necessarily uh, load according to a certain file or project. They're kind of unique to each machine. Okay, so uh, to get started here, uh, if we to generate, uh, you'll notice we have two options to start with. We can use the XGen editor, or we can actually load an example off of the XGen library. Now, if I choose that, and if we select here, the actual library, it's the only one we have available. You can actually save your own presets into here, download them offline. What you're gonna find are all of the original Maya Fur presets kind of redone for XGen. Now, these can be decent starting points. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of using these, um, primarily because I like building my own fur from the ground up. However, they really are great to take a look at just to see um, how the experts, obviously, who wrote the software and work with it every day, uh, set up their own fur. Okay, so we're not actually going to add one of those presets, although it's as simple as selecting your mesh, double clicking the preset, and everything loads for you. What we're going to do instead is go here to generate and choose the XGen editor. Okay, you're going to be presented with this window. Uh, it's a little against uh, kind of the normal Maya workflow. You know, typically we expect a window to load. Uh, keep in mind, XGen was a plugin, so it's just a little bit different in how it functions. So in here, what we have to do is either create a new description, import a collection or description, and we'll discuss the difference between those in just a bit, or import a preset. Again, if you click this, we'll go right back to that same library. I'll go ahead and create a new description. Oops, notice I didn't have anything selected, so it kind of gave me the error there. We'll go ahead and grab that, click Create New Description, and we're ready to start. So the first thing you want is a description name and a collection name. Now, the description name would be this specific fur that we're working with. Um, you know, it's, I don't really have a valid idea, good idea, whatever you want to call it, of what kind of fur this is. We're just going to call this Bigfoot Demo Fur. Why not? And uh, the collection would be uh, kind of like a group of different types of fur. Let's say that this Bigfoot character needs you know, special types of fur for the head, a different type of fur maybe for the arms, the back, the legs, maybe yet different kind of fur for the hands. You could all store these under one collection. That way you can load a collection with multiple types of furs to choose from. Uh, so we'll actually call this, uh, actually not the Bigfoot demo fur, let's call this Bigfoot body fur. And we'll call our collection just Bigfoot Fur. There we go. So we won't really need other types of fur. We're just going to work with one. But if I ever decide to maybe make different types, uh, I could keep adding them to this collection. And these collections will be stored inside of our project. OK, so next we have to choose the type of primitives that we're going to work with. So uh, rather the method that we're creating these primitives. And we can choose between splines groomable splines, custom geometry, spheres, or cards. Now, we're not going to cover most of these inside of this lesson. We're focusing primarily on fur. And for fur, we use something called groomable splines. But just to kind of give you a rough idea of what these are, well, they do actually give you a great description here, splines would be kind of almost like nerves curves that you can kind of adjust individually. And it'll kind of interpolate hair or whatever other primitives you're using uh, to kind of go in between all of those guide hairs that you create or guide splines. Groomable splines are kind of the same principle. Uh, it's going to create little splines that kind of line the entire surface. Uh, the difference is rather than changing them kind of vertex by vertex, we're actually going to use combing and other types of brushes. And you can see it tells you these are great for longer hair, these are great for shorter hair, fur, grass, etc. Custom geometry will actually allow us to load in any piece of geometry we want and have that appear at different locations on the mesh. And great, as you can see, for flowers, uh, you know, anything that's going to be you know, it's populated, uh, let's say trees, stuff like that. Uh, you can also do something similar with spheres. You can see the placement of these are going to work better for pebbles, marbles, or you can also use flat cards. Again, these would be nice for far away if you're just mapping, let's say, plants or something to them. Now, each one of these can 
uh, have a different method of generating primitives randomly in uniform rows and columns or at specific points. And you'll notice that most of these have the option to choose those except for groomable splines. These can only be created randomly across the surface. Again, this is one we discussed we're going to be using, so we don't really have a choice we need to make here. Uh, same thing down here. How are we controlling these primitives? You'll notice that groomable splines can only be controlled by the grooming tools. So not much of a choice that we have to make there either. You will notice that things like the splines have multiple choices. We can either control them through expressions or just manually place them. Um, you could see we also have other choices. Uh, rather, these other ones also have these same two choices. However, groomable splines is the only one that can use the actual grooming tools. So um, I might do tutorials in the future about some of these other ones, specifically the splines, because I think those are pretty cool too. I mostly work in dynamic, so I haven't used these others a whole lot. I have used them a bit for set dressing, though. However, these are the two I'm a little more experienced with. So for today, though, groomable splines, no other choices to make. Let's go ahead and hit Create. And let's see what we get. Well, this is looking a little strange. We have a couple of huge, what look like hairs, and then these tubes that stick out. We'll discuss a little bit later what these tubes are. However, what we're experiencing here is an issue with our scale. By default, um, I believe uh, XGen is designed for a fairly large scale. And even though, though this guy is built to kind of more of a real world scale, uh, technically he's even a little bit bigger, you can see they're coming in huge. Now, we can still work with this. I can always come down here and begin increasing my density and taking my length down. And now I have you know, a more decent amount of splines to work with. However, I'm starting to work with these really, really tiny numbers. Uh, and I don't really like that. I prefer to, you know, to keep those a little bit more uh, normalized as much as possible. So what I'm going to prefer to do is uh, increase the scale of this before I add in my X gen. So let me go ahead and reload this scene. OK, and let's go ahead and do this one more time. But first, scale up our mesh. Go to my channel box, and let's go ahead and just up this to 10 times the scale. And we'll go ahead and just move him up above the grid. This shouldn't affect anything because it is an Alembic cache. There we go. We'll go ahead and load our XGen. You'll notice that I can actually hit the XGen tab over here now. Create a new description. We'll go ahead and say this is our Bigfoot body fur. Capitalize that. And this will be our Bigfoot collection. In fact, We'll just end this with a COL so we know it stands for collection. And we'll choose our groomable splines and hit create. Give that just a moment. And you'll notice it immediately looks better. We now have a much better covering of fur. And the scale seems a little bit uh, easier to work with as well. So we're kind of on our way here. I think this is a good point to go ahead and stop this lesson. I'm going to go ahead and save this file as lesson 03end. And we'll go ahead and pick up right here in the next lesson and start learning about all of the different tabs as well as the grooming tools inside of uh, XGen. So I'll see you guys in just a bit.